Everyone has an idealistic fantasy and imagination about the Amazon rainforest. We mostly hear about how massively important the Amazon rainforest is for the global ecosystem, while at the same time, learning about how it's gradually being torn down through fires and the persistent growth of civilization. My friend suggested one day to do an Amazon adventure, and luckily I was in Curitiba, Brazil at the time, so everything lined up perfectly. Before going, I went to a local Brazilian hospital for a free yellow fever immunization and stocked up on mosquito repellent. I hopped on a flight, and within six hours, I was in Manaus, the capital city deep in the heart of Amazonas State, Brazil. Manaus is like most metropolitan cities in Brazil. Hot, humid, and completely unlike what you would expect a city to look like deep in the Amazon. It was literally a sprawling urban city with giant concrete buildings, expansive cement streets, and archaic colonial architecture mixed in. Within Manaus, my buddy and I teamed up with our local guide Eduardo, who would baby step us and keep us alive within the Amazon. Luckily, Eduardo spoke perfect English because he grew up in the Netherlands, but he returned to live in Brazil to fulfill his dream of being a guide within the Amazon rainforest. Day 1, Welcome to the Jungle After a quick two-day rest within the city of Manaus, we woke up early, left any major items, took whatever we needed for a four-day trek, and made our way to the docks of Manaus on the Rio Negro. At the docks of Porto da Siasa, we hopped onto a high-speed boat and made our way across the Rio Negro. On the other side, we jumped into a minibus that transports locals from the docks to their local villages deeper into the Amazon. After a bumpy 30-minute ride of road and jungle, we stopped at a bridge in a small town. My buddy said hello to a few of the locals and we made our way down the hill to a small river called the Paraná do Arasa. Then once more, we jumped into an even smaller motorboat, enough for three people, and made our way down the river deep into the Amazon rainforest. Along the way, we stopped in a local shop floating along the river for some photos, curiosity, and our guide picked up a few supplies for the rest of the journey. As the evening drew closer and closer, we ended up in a jungle lodge along the river. Clearly, they hosted many adventures, as both food and bed were ready upon arrival. Aside from a few mosquitoes and a giant spider in our accommodations, everything went smoothly. The night didn't last long, as everyone was tired, so it was time for bed and an early wake-up the next morning. Day 2, Deep Jungle Camping The next day, we quickly ate the delicious prepared breakfast from our lodge, went down to the cattle by the river to say hello, and jumped back into our motorboat to continue the Amazon adventure. This second day involved hours and hours of river sailing, and getting high with our guide on a little maconha. While I rarely get high, the Amazon was clearly one of the best places to see what curiosities the mind could think of while high. It's interesting that I'm contaminating myself with a foreign substance while surrounded by the cleanest air on the planet inside the lungs of the earth. I thought to myself ironically, every once in a while, an Amazonian would sail down the river. We would say hello as he would continue to his destination. Our guide explained to us that mostly men go back to town for supplies. Some men would go and stay in the city for several days or weeks to work before coming back. Their wives would typically stay at home and nurse the children and take care of the house for days or weeks at a time. We continued to sail down the muddy river while the dense jungles drifted by. Much of the area was clear-cut of all trees and shrubs for the occasional Amazonian home. While streaming through the river, each of us would float away in thought, perhaps thinking about trivialities we left back in civilization. As the evening slowly crept towards us, Eduardo said it was time to set up camp. We drifted towards a dense jungle land patch and Eduardo tied up fish netting on the trees that stuck out of the water. This fishnet would be our main source for dinner later that evening. Eduardo parked our boat and one by one, we carried different parts of our makeshift tent and hammocks to our new location deep into the jungle. Eduardo had done this hundreds of times before, so he would confidently hack and slash at things and tie things together while my buddy and I pretended to be of use. As we prepared our jungle camp, a thunderstorm kicked in and we could finally say we were really in the Amazon rainforest. But thankfully, within an hour, the storm calmly ended and the darkness of night came into full swing. Eduardo set up an improvised barbecue out of cut logs, sticks and twigs and he collected the appropriate wood to set up a fire. He then threw some fish onto the barbecue and prepared a pot of rice while we sat in semi-silence and hunger as our dinner prepared. After a delicious meal of Amazonian river fish, rice and a little salt for extra flavor, it was time for bed. I was extremely tired and thought to myself it would be a good idea to set up my bed on the floor of the jungle. But after just two minutes of setting up, 
Eduardo quickly picked up my bed and warned me about the dangerous colonies of fire ants, millipedes, and poisonous snakes. So he tied a hammock for me to a tree and it was finally time to get some shut-eye. But while setting up his own hammock, Eduardo calls out to come and see something quickly. I rush over to see what it is and am greeted by a giant spider with a face not even a mother could love. My buddy, preferring to sleep, simply yells for us to kill it and show him what it is in the morning. I jump into my hammock and pass out after a long day. Day 3, Staying with Amazonians The next morning, we packed up our tent, loaded up our boat, and made our way over to the fish netting. As Eduardo pulled the fish netting out of the river, all of the fish that we were meant to catch had been devoured by piranhas, with only tiny corpses of our fish remaining. Yet, a handful of unlucky piranhas had also been caught, so this was going to be our meal within just a few hours later. As Eduardo tried to show us the teeth of a piranha, it bit his hand and blood quickly started gushing out. After millions of years of evolution, piranha teeth are like razor-sharp steak knives designed to take a nice chunk out of your flesh and make you bleed profusely. But undeterred, Eduardo had been here before, so he simply shrugged it off, poured some rubbing alcohol on his wound, and washed it off with the Amazon River. Our journey continued down the Amazon. More jungle trees, more shrubs sticking out of the water, more motorboat rumblings, the occasional local, and just enjoying the reality of being in the middle of nowhere, all while under the deep introspective waves of Maconha. By midday, our motor stopped working in the middle of the river, and it was a perfect moment to joke ironically that we were going to die. We are in the middle of the Amazon and the engine doesn't Amazon, work. Guys, we are in the middle of the Amazon here, and actually our guide in the background, Eduardo, f***ed up. He actually, we are dying now here. As per the current mass online media producing culture, you always suffix every event of excitement with the ironic make sure to subscribe, like, follow on Facebook, Instagram, etc. Regardless, you have to subscribe on the button here. And don't forget the like button, guys. It's all about the like. And check out our Instagrams and, and Twitter and Facebook and... And also LinkedIn and, uh, and Instagram and, and Snapchat. This video, we have the links about Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, action. After about 15 minutes of working away at the motor, Eduardo finally got things working again, and we continued on our journey. Our next stop involved a short visit to the absolutely massive Kapok trees. Although this was surely a routine tourist path location, it was nonetheless awe-inspiring at how massive these trees can grow. Afterwards, we jumped back into the boat and continued down no particular direction within the Amazon rivers. After another one to two hours of river riding, we made our way into another piece of land as Eduardo evaluated whether we would stay the night there. He asked us whether we prefer setting up camp once more or if we would prefer to stay with some of the locals in the Amazon. Despite only being our third day within the Amazon, both my buddy and I already felt a bit burned out. There was only so much jungle and river you could possibly take in, so we both elected to stay with the locals. Staying with the Amazonian locals could, of course, be another novelty. Were we expecting half-naked feather-dressed natives? Probably not. At this point, it seemed like every Amazonian we saw was wearing t-shirts, flip-flops, and football caps anywhere we went in the Amazon. Nonetheless, we hopped back into our boat and made our way several hours back towards where we came from. Even deep in the jungle, your brain has the potential to intuitively articulate directions quite well. After an hour or two more of riding down the river, we finally arrived at a massive lake and rode right into the center of it. The sun was setting, and it was exactly what you would imagine a watercolor painting to look like. Vivid dark blues, graying whites, deep orange sunlight shining through the clouds, multiplied by a full mirror reflection from the lake. After a few group selfies and a rapidly darkening sky, it was time to finally meet the locals. Eduardo navigated the boat towards the shore, and we hopped out to meet the Amazonian locals. They invited us to their home with open arms, and we came to sit into their supposed living room or kitchen or bedroom all in one. Apparently the chief settled here many years ago and slowly built the entire place out of the ground, day by day, month to month, year after year, decade after decade. While I say chief, in reality, he was simply a young guy who grew his family in this small part of the Amazon, like most families in the area. With Eduardo as our translator, the chief showed us some interesting curiosities with obviously even more epic stories. For example, the giant alligator that he snuck up on while he was sleeping, or the giant anaconda skin that needed to be rolled out along several meters. After some more banter, I decided to ask him about what he was most concerned about in his reality, and his answer absolutely shocked me. His reply was contempt and worry about the election of Donald Trump and the reality that this new president would bring. This shocked me because this chief, along with his family, were worlds apart from the politics of the United States. Yet, this was his answer, 
deep within the Amazonian jungle in the heart of Brazil, thousands of kilometers away. After a few more minutes or so, Eduardo informed us that we were going out with the chief to hunt for our next meal. At this time, it was almost midnight with overcast, so you can imagine it was almost pitch black darkness. Using a few head-mounted flashlights, we all got back into the boat with the chief and set out back into the lake. Eduardo would explain to us that we were hunting jacare. While neither I nor my buddy could see or detect anything, Eduardo was using his years of intuition to catch his prey. After a few rounds around the lake, Eduardo leaned over the boat and within two seconds pulled out a small jacare using just his hand. He said we wouldn't eat it because it was still a baby, but obviously it was the perfect opportunity to take a photo with. He let it go and we continued looking. After a few more rounds around the lake, Eduardo stood up, took out his bow, and shot into the water. A second later, he pulled a large jacare to the boat and continued slashing at its neck until it completely stopped moving. It's a paradoxical feeling seeing a live animal butchered savagely this way, yet knowing that the locals survive on the local wildlife like this. We navigated back to the chief's home and settled in, put up a couple hammocks within the living room, and went off to bed. Day 4. Back home. Our last day in the Amazon, we got up nice and early as a female in the chief's home began preparing the jacare from the night before. I wandered around the home to see how they lived and discovered dozens of cats, kittens, dogs, puppies, chickens, and ducks running around. I didn't think too much of it, but ultimately some of these creatures would serve their purpose later on. The other family members murmured around, so I was curious to know what a daily conversation between them was about. I asked Eduardo, and he said they mostly talked about hunting and some great places to catch jacare and other wildlife. I couldn't help but contrast this with my own thoughts about emails, social media, and other trivialities of the digitally connected urban life. After an hour or so, our jacare was ready, and it was time to taste this Amazonian delicacy. I'll be honest, I don't remember the taste of the jacare, but if that's the case, then it probably wasn't that memorable. And no, it didn't taste like chicken. After the meal, we gathered our things and went down to the motorboat for a farewell with the chief and his family members. Then it was time to get back into the boat and navigate to the tail end of our journey in the Amazon jungles. An hour or so more of sailing and we finally made it back to where we started our journey, at the shore of a river and a bridge where the minibus dropped us off originally. We grabbed our things off the boat and made our way up to the bridge. A few minutes later, the local minibus came by and we hopped in. Despite exhaustion, within minutes, we all had our cell phones out waiting for the first drip of a cellular signal. During the three days in the jungle, you aren't tempted to reconnect, because there's no opportunity to do so, hence there is no incessant urge to check. Yet, despite being disconnected from the metaphorical grid for only a few days, immediately upon having the opportunity to reconnect, you feel like your proverbial arm was cut off. Within about 20 minutes, we finally picked up a sliver of a cellular signal and in poured a tsunami of notifications down the entire phone screen. For the remainder of our journey, all of our eyes were simply glued to our phone screens, from the van, to the boat, to the taxi, back to the hotel in downtown Manaus. All major discussions were about one meaningless notification or another, or about posting our adventures online for the dopamine of validation from friends and family on social media. Despite having a once-in-a-lifetime experience diving deep into a strange new world with many new novelties and having a cool story to tell, you are immediately absorbed back into regular life, technology, and social media as if nothing ever happened. Day 5, Carnival. The following day began the month-long Manaus Carnival. Barbecues on the street, people in costumes, and a vibrant, sexualized, and beer-guzzling festival all across the city. People wanting to escape their everyday grind and simply enjoying life with big parties and lots of music. And after a little bit of everything in Manaus, it was time to continue my journey onto other destinations in Brazil. In conclusion, would I do another deep Amazonian adventure in my life? Probabilistically not. It's a nice disconnect from the daily ultra-connected urban reality, but that's a reality that I enjoy. Furthermore, there's only so much jungle, forest, and Amazonian river a novelty and adventure-seeking tourist can handle. But would I recommend a deep Amazonian adventure? Absolutely. If you have the time, cash, and enjoy going on adventures, then this is definitely something to do at least once in your life. Obviously, the more days you go, the more your mind and body dissolve from your usual routine. Also, remember to get your yellow fever shot before going. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe button. This will let me know to make more fun videos like this in the future. Once again, this is Leonidas, Saúde.